And it's when they sound, when the trumpet sound, oh Lord, I'm going to wear, I'll wear a starry crown, oh Lord, you know that I shall wear, I'll wear a golden crown, sing it again, sing it again, and I'll wear a crown. I'm going to wear a crown, and it's when they sound, when the trumpets, when they sound, oh Lord, I'll wear a crown, I'll wear a starry crown, Lord, and you know that I sing it again, I I shall wear a gold. Sing it again, say. I shall wear a gold. If you believe that, I shall wear a gold. We'll see mama and daddy, yeah. I shall wear a gold. Forever and ever and ever. I'm gonna get my crown. A, a golden crown. Church, say amen. If you're going to wear a golden crown, say amen. amen. God has saved your soul, say amen. amen. God is a mighty good God to us, even when we don't deserve all of his goodness, his kindness. We know that he's a good God because Every morning, he has a provision for us called mercy. Mercies of which we don't even deserve, he extends them to us. And if you're like me, I need all of my mercy. Every single day. I know I may say something, do something that God does not like, and I need his mercy. To carry me the rest of the day. It's good to be in the household of God. It's good to be back uh, in town. Uh, I was gone last week to Oklahoma City. Uh, I had to uh, do a little work there with the Forest Park Church of Christ where Shannon Hayes is the minister. I, I had the opportunity to install him to that work and it was a memorable moment in the life of that congregation. Uh, I feel so blessed to have been a part of that experience with that congregation as well as Shannon as their new preacher. It was a very joyful, joyful, exciting, enthusiastic time to share with a congregation that has a preacher that God has called to be their preacher. So I was there that weekend. I got to see a lot of people I hadn't seen in quite some time, and uh, so it was uh, a very good weekend for, for me. Uh, but I was ready to come back. I missed you while I was away uh, because I believe as much as I enjoyed the Forest Park Church, uh, there's nobody, nothing like the South Lake Church of Christ. I tell you, I tell you. I've been a lot of places, and I've been a lot of worship services across the country, but South Lake, you are the people of God. There's no doubt about it. So good to see uh, uh, Pun and Terry back from being overseas, seeing her family. It's always uh, a delight to see her uh, and Terry. Um, it's always good to go back home and see our loved ones, but it's always good to come back. Uh, and so we're so happy that God blessed you in your travels there and in your travels back. It's always good to see Wayne. He travels. He, he's a truck driver, so he's gone a lot of the time providing for his lovely wife and his family. So, but uh, when he's gone, it's felt, I, I feel his absence. And so to see him back this morning, it's a good feeling. And I know Joanne is delighted to have her mate back home uh, for a while anyway. Uh, this is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, I believe. And uh, Southlake has decided that this Sunday will be our Pink Sunday where we would uh, acknowledge that uh, 
that awareness of breast cancer, especially those that have survived it, uh, and those that are in our midst that have survived it. God bless you, and God keeps you, keep you. Also, um, the research goes on, isn't that right? Until it is eradicated and not touched so many lives. So we look forward to the research that uh, keep on giving us survivors along, along the way. Um, so that I don't forget, I need to mention quickly that um, um, we have treats for our children in our audience uh, this morning, immediately after worship service. I want all of our children to go back. They're, they're waiting for you. Uh, if there's leftover, any adult can have whatever's leftover. We want to make sure all of our children get their bag of treats uh, on behalf of the youth ministry of the South Lake Church of Christ. Is that all right? Now, I have to admit, I was a part of bagging some of it up, and uh, if some bags seem smaller than others, it's me. <laughs> it's me. Uh, I just can't get enough of it. I don't care how old you get. You just enjoy those kinds of, of things. So I'm, I'm owning up. But I can't get started until I thank our bishop for uh, standing in my stead. Sam did a fantastic job. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm delighted and I'm so grateful for men like Sam and men like Cornell and men like Kevin, Kevin that can stand as uh, the oracles of God and teach and preach the word of God in the absence of our preacher, you or myself. So I, I'm delighted. I'm, I'm happy about that. Uh, they're going to be speaking more often uh, as the weeks come, as the year sort of goes out. I'll, I'll give them more opportunity to, to do that. For a subject matter, let me, let me sort of piggyback off of Sunday school. I didn't know um, that I would be preaching this uh, on this particular week of what they're teaching in Sunday school. If you miss uh, Sunday school, you really miss a really good class. And so don't miss Sunday school. Make a, a strong family effort to make it to Bible class both on Sunday morning as well as on Wednesday night. And the only way that we know that you will be here is that you have to make it intentional. And when you make it intentional, you make a statement to the family that I don't care what's going on in our lives. We have to reshape, redesign, refocus, uh, not on our own selves, but on our learning of God and knowing God. And one way of doing that is to complement what you already ought to be doing at home, that's studying to so, show yourselves approved. So we want to accentuate that by you coming to our Bible classes um, on Sunday morning and we want to start on time and be on time and as well as on Wednesday night. So I, I'm using for a subject, pulling my share of the load. Is that all right? I, I want us to look at it from the perspective is that we all have a part in the growth of South Lake. And um, there's nothing more rewarding to know that as hard as I'm working, I can look over to my right and see a fellow member of the church working just as hard as I am. And uh, it's such a good feeling to know that when we are called to do things in the body of Christ for the uplifting of the saints here, and if I break out in a sweat because I'm just so dedicated to what we're doing, I don't care if it's moving chairs, I don't care if it's a Bible study, if I break out in a sweat, I want to look at a brother or sister to the left or to the right, sweating just as much as I'm sweating. And I, you know I can sweat, is that right? Uh, and so I, I want us to, to, to look at our life as a church. And I want us to see uh, us uh, pulling the load of responsibility as equally as humanly possible. Is that all right? And so for a text, I want us to look at Ephesians. Chapter 4, just a few verses, uh, verses 12 through 16. And while it is loaded with uh, all kinds of great nuggets of truth, Look 
color because they give, uh, they are the gravy to the steak or uh, to the uh, meat of the, of, the, of the lesson. So I want us to, to look at it like that. I, I don't know um, if every single member of South Lake has uh, signed up for uh, a ministry yet. Uh, I, don't, I don't know that we have. I don't know that we have. Uh, uh, my hope is that, that every, um, every one of us uh, have already signed up for a ministry. If perhaps you have not, that is one of our calendar yearly goals, okay? Uh, and so, so while we, we think about uh, pulling your share load, I also want you to be mindful of the idea of um, being involved. And one, one way of being involved and one way that this text will really mean something to you is if you're already contemplating that I got something particularly of importance to do in this church body. And it's this church body that I belong to and that God has called me and my family to be a part of. And since God above has, I must answer. Is that all right? Uh, so I want us to look at it from, from, from this perspective. Uh, so whatever the Lord wants uh, for us to do as a congregation, as a church, he wants it done by all of us working together. Y'all might have quiet this morning. Whatever God wants South Lake to do, uh, I want you to understand it that because we are congregation, uh, many members but one church, I want to understand the purpose, uh, the directives that God gives us as a He wants in his mind members of the church to all work at it together, hand in hand, shoulder to shoulder, step by step. That's how he wants us to look. That's how he wants us to move. That's how he wants us to interact. We move as a unit, uh, shoulder uh, to shoulder, a uh, uh, hand in hand, and step by step, even, even when we don't always agree. And sometimes when we don't agree, we have the nerve to fall out with somebody. Y'all know we can fall out in a minute. It doesn't take long. It doesn't take much for us to get angry and upset and frustrated with a fellow uh, a saint that we're supposed to be shoulder to shoulder. Can you imagine being mad at somebody and they shoulder and their shoulder touching your? And then when it's time for us to line up in ministry work, uh, you have the, you have to grab that one person that happens to be right next to your hand as you work, and all on the inside, you will just feel it some kind of way. I know in your minds, especially your ideas, you somehow feel are the most brilliant ideas in all of the world. Even if you are the only one that feels that way, uh, I know we can have that kind of attitude about uh, what we are offering and what we're bringing to the table. But I'm telling you that it takes all of us collectively to get the job done. And while you're falling out, I want you to read a very uh, a, 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 a familiar text in Acts chapter 15, verses 36 uh, through 41 this week uh, that talks about uh, good friends falling I shared that in a sermon before, but I want you to revisit that this week. So if you have issue with anybody in the church, remember, God is asking you to grab their hand. God is asking you to uh, get in formation shoulder to shoulder. When it's time to step, you ought to step in unison with the folk that make you most angry. Somebody said, that's you preaching. Uh, well, we're going to do this together. There will always be bumps on the road, hurdles for our congregation to jump over, valleys and mountaintops. Let's, let's get God's work done for the rest of this calendar year 
because this year is dwindling fast, we not only need to do it for the rest of this year, it's preparatory for next year. Throughout Ephesians chapter 4, there are, there's a single, I want you to understand my text in this light. Uh, throughout chapter 4, there's a single thread um, or theme or principle that seems to repeat itself from beginning to the end of the chapter. Uh, and that is the sense of unity. Now, that's going to pose a question for the family at South Lake. We got to ask ourselves, uh, how much do we walk in harmony one with another? How unified are we as a church? Can we look in the mirror and see ourselves reflectively to, to get a sense of, are we all together or are we just all over the place doing our own thing, our own way? And now important, how important it is to the building up of the church. Since Jesus said himself, I will build my church. Matthew 16, verse 18. Who would better know how to build it uh, than the builder himself? The builder requires the body to work as one. Let me show you something. That's perhaps why chapter 4 starts out by dealing with attitudes. That's key to who we are. That's key to us moving in ministry life. You have to understand, our attitude needs to be righteous. It needs to be uh, in a relationship with God that I'm emulating Christ in all that I do, even when you make me mad. Our attitude of those who have been called to build upon what has already been established. That's verses 1 through 6 of Ephesians chapter 4, dealing with humility, dealing with gentleness, dealing with patience, dealing with forbearing love, dealing with unity. All of that is found in the first six verses of Ephesians chapter 4. What that suggests is a, a chapter dedicated to unity. I got to really work hard with my fellow brother and sister. Not so, to the point where we become selfless, that's humility. i got to learn to hold my tongue when I really want to say something. That's being gentle, being patient with my sister, with my brother, because uh, projects and ministry life don't always move swiftly. It doesn't always move as you would like for it. So I need to approach ministry with a sense of gentleness, a sense of humility, and a be patient. See how God is working it out. Then I got to have a forbearing love. That's unconditional love. That means I'm going to love you no matter how many times we go round and round and round in a meeting. Some meetings should only last 10 to 15 minutes, but when you get the right folk in there, and then lastly, we got to remember, listen, this is my church family. The unity of it all, how close-knitted we are, how we depend on each other, how we look for one another in times of need, that's us. Those should be the days when you're struggling all by yourself. Sometimes it's not even monetary. Sometimes you just need somebody to talk to or show. And if, you're, if there's a shoulder you need to lean on, we got a whole lot of shoulders now because we're marching shoulder to shoulder. Sometimes, just sometimes, you need someone to come and hold your hand. And while holding your hands, you ain't got to say nothing. Then he goes, Paul goes right into explaining such unity by Mentioning seven ones, describing the Holy Spirit, describing Jesus Christ, describing the Father. The focus being on the oneness of them, not in some respect, but in every respect. Verses 4 through 6. 
And then let me share something else about my outline to get to where I'm going. Verses 7 through 11 of this chapter. He reminds us of the gifts of Christ to the church. The essence of the gospel is not what men should do for God, but rather what God has done for men. So what God has done for Saffle is to reward her with gifts. Everybody likes gifts. My grandkids love gifts. Uh, you can't just, I got three of them. Uh, and shall I always have, uh, uh, you can't just buy one a gift bin. And they're all there looking and seeing how one of them is receiving a gift. My youngest one and my second one will be the first one screaming, where is my gift? And sometimes, that's money for all three. Sometimes I got enough for just what? One. So you know what I got to do now, son? I got to sneak them outside and uh, wait till that one comes to the house. And I got something for you. Because, and then they're so bad, they go on with the rest of them. Look, Granddaddy Gigi got me. Now Gigi, how to get the other two? We love gifts. We love gifts. And this is about the, the giving season. Isn't that right? Uh, some of us have set money aside so you can buy certain gifts. Some of us are going to uh, scrape and do everything we can to buy somebody a gift, even if it doesn't cost very much. You know the thought is what matters most. We love gifts. Let's look at the text. He's in chapter 4. Starting at verse 12, walk with me. In this narrative, Paul is writing to the church at Ephesus. He says to equip his people for what? There's always work. This is what I think about the Lord's church. There's always work involved. That's part of what Kitchen was saying in Sunday school. Whatever gift you have, whatever gift you're given, Work is always involved with your gift. To equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be what? Y'all see that? that? That demonstrates how important you are to the rest of the body. It's that it demonstrates how important your particular gift is to the team of where we grow, go and how we grow as a church. You are tremendously important to where we're going. Verse 13 says, until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of, of God, to do what? To become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. What that indicates is, the Lord's church, wherever it's her, she sits in a community, her goal is to increase in knowledge, increase in gifts, increase in service, increase in your workload. And some of us are not afraid of work. Your own personal jobs, your jobs that support the household. Sometimes you'll do overtime and don't think nothing about it. I can't get off on that. I got to hear that. Verse 14 says, Then we will no longer be what? Infants tossed back and forth by the waves uh, and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheme. Is that in your Bible? This is what I want to get to. I have my seat. Watch 15. Part of the church. He says, instead, speaking the truth how in love, we will grow 
to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head. So what we got to begin to talk about as the church is how are we measuring our maturity in this body? Are we growing up? In fact, it's an a illustration is how do you measure your child's development and maturity level? What benchmarks do you place and give them to determine if they're reaching maturity as they grow up? Y'all see that? Look at verse 16. From him, now watch this. I, I like 15, I, I like the whole text, but my focus is 15 and 16. 15, there's an expectation of growth. In fact, every body of Christ, I don't care how long they've been on the vine, you're always growing. You're always executing God's purpose, God's will for the life of that church. Wherever you are on the vine, another vineyard. Now watch 16. 16 says, from him, the whole body, join. You ain't got time to be mad at me that long. Join. You ought not carry that kind of attitude when the Lord's work is of supreme importance. In other words, what you feel it doesn't carry that much weight. In other words, do what? Get over it. How am I going to get over it? You need to love me how? Unconditionally. And wherever I fail, you carry the slack. Whatever I lack, you have more than enough to supply the needs of a ministry. So together as we grow, we can work this thing. How? Together. Why? Because we're joined. I think sometimes 21st century churches of Christ, you miss it. You, you lose it. You don't practice it because we go to our separate homes. We feel that out of sight, it's out of mind. And this text tells you, uh, I don't care where you live. You can live in Alpharetta. You can live down south. It doesn't matter. We are joined together. We need to act like we're joined together. Charles, we need to talk more. Spend time more often. No one's going to offer each other more often. And I ain't talking about getting in your business. I got enough stuff in my own life to be worried about what's going on in yours. In fact, we can cry a river together if we get together. Sometimes we don't, we're worried about the wrong thing. We are joined. Now watch this. Not only is the body, the church, the local congregation, we are joined and held together. How? By every, not some, by every supporting ligament. The ligaments are those little small parts of our body that keeps everything intact. Sometimes you watch sports, uh, uh, a football player uh, uh, messes up his ligaments, which means he, his knee or ankle or whatever ain't working right because he needed those small, insignificant ties to keep everything working how? Properly intact. I wonder if we are, have been disjointed because some ligament doesn't show up, doesn't serve up, even work on. I wonder how much we're struggling as a church because members of the Lord's church feel like they don't need to. They're too insignificant. I ain't got time for all of this. And I wonder how much we are limping. From him, the whole body, join. Not only join, what keeps us together? Held together by every supporting. I like the idea that it's supporting, which means you ain't always got front and center stage. Sometimes you need to play the what? Support role. 
Ligaments are not the arteries of the body. Arteries are, they're the ones that get all of our attention. Somebody says, how do you know? Go get a, go have somebody draw blood and they got to stick a needle in one of your veins. That vein is some major artery. And every time they stick it, you want to holler. Like, From the whole body, South Lake will join. We are held together by every supporting ligament. Then guess what happens? Grows and builds what? Itself. Where? Up how? In love. As each part does its work. Pulling my share of the load means that you have work to do, and when you fail to do that, you make me work overtime. Now, while a lot of us love our jobs, after a while, we don't want no more what? Overtime, because you had work more than you at home. Overtime. Nice this time of the season. You get extra money. But I'm telling you, the more money you get on your check, uh, uh, the government says, I want some of that extra you got. Sometimes it's not working. Worth working overtime. Because just as much as you get, they get. Each part doing their fair share of the load. Now, the growth of the church doesn't necessarily depend uh, or come from clever strategies. I'm going to show us from this text what Paul is trying to teach the church there. A real growth uh, of a congregation comes when every single member of the body fully using his or her spiritual gifts, but you got to use them. Now, this is key, y'all. Don't miss this. You got to use That's when all of us our gifts, but you got to use the gifts in close contact with other Christians. Somebody said, for that reason, I'm out. <laughs> but that's the key. Uh, parents are gifts, not some, some, uh, something somebody planned up in there on their computer. The, the best way for a church to really grow is when every member is a part of a ministry. Because if you're a part of a ministry, you're doing what God is asking you to do. If you're doing what God is asking you to do, you are constantly in contact, not necessarily with you and I, but with God. Because if you come work with me, you sold up got to pay to who? Y'all are going to get this after a while. Christ, no doubt, is the source of the life and the power and the growth of the church. There's no doubt about it. Christ is it. Uh, every, every, everybody will agree that. How does Christ orchestrate all this on a daily basis? It's through the church. He facilitates through each member their gifts and mutual ministry uh, in joint teaching uh, other members. And so we're, or rather, joint touching of other members. So he wants us to touch each other shoulder to shoulder, hand in hand, and work together. It gives him glory to see his children, even though we may be at odds, put that stuff aside and say, we got to get this done. We're going to get this done. If we have to stay here all night and figure it out, we're going to accomplish this. Not for our own self, uh, uh, glory, but for the glory of God, we're going to get it done. Look at it this way. The power of the church flows from the Lord through individual members and relationships that are formed between the members. That's what the Lord does his best work for church when he works it through you and I, and we are coming together to serve a greater purpose. When we have close relationships 
of genuinely spiritual ministry. When that happens, I want you to know something else happens. When we're working on, as a team, if teamwork is essential, God begins to work. When we don't have skills and true working relationship with each other and faithful with our gifts, God cannot work. And the reason why he cannot work, because we're too busy at odds with each other and refuse to work. God cannot work. He, need for, uh, he needs us to be a, a loving family that don't mind burning the midnight oil so something happens at the church the next Sunday or the next day. We need folk to come in great numbers and not let your personal life take precedence over your spiritual service to God. I wonder if there are ligaments that have been severed. Because when it's time to show up, are we all here together? Shoulder to shoulder, hand in hand. Or, do, or is your life so full of uh, problems and issues, you're not even thinking about God, let alone the church? God cannot work in that kind of atmosphere. Look at it like this. Our own physical body functions properly as each member in union with other members respond to the direction of the head to do exactly what it is designed to do. Like the human body, the church is a living organism. Look at Colossians chapter 2, just one single verse. Colossians 2. Verse 19 says, Paul gives us insight and he warns against not holding fast to the head. That's where it always starts. When you stop listening to the head, the head of the church is always Christ. That's an indicator. Of, of probably why you're not as dedicated as you need to be in ministry. Maybe you stop listening to the head. And if you stop listening to the head, you're in trouble. Paul oh, the church at Ephesus. Uh, you can't afford to stop listening to the head. Why? For whom all the body nourished. Are we healthy? A nourished be a baby is a healthy baby. You've given it all the nourishment it needs to what? To thrive. The question is, as we sit this year, are we thriving as a church? Are we a healthy church? From whom all the body nourished, not just nourished, and knit together. You can't get away from me if you try. Why? Because we are knitted together. How? By Joints, like Paul said in the book of uh, Ephesians, by joints and what? Ligaments. When all of that is working, what happened? Grows with the increase. That is from who? That's from God. That's growth in a church. If we're going to be about the business of the Lord, if we're going to grow as a church, if we're going to feel as a church, if everybody's going to sign up from for ministry, uh, it has to come from the head. The head is already mandated. What's holding? It may be some ligaments. There may be some, we may have some joint problems. Uh, we may be limping. Uh, we may not be working to full capacity. Or we may be malnourished as a church. I, uh, my grandkids, when they're over, we don't fuss, but I, I bring to them. They always like to eat what they want to eat. Anybody? Remember, they always want to eat the, the junk food and all. And so I try to put vegetables on their plate and good stuff on their plate and all that stuff. And that's all the stuff they don't want. They don't even want. And then they want to half eat all the food on the uh, plate to be thrown away. And I said, listen, there are children in the world. I, I did that number, y'all. There are children in the world who are starving. And I was tempted to show them some. I don't know if they can handle it. But when you see a malnourished child, it brings tears to your eyes. 
I want to wonder. Selfishness. Do I need to what a malnourished me? The key is for every member of the body to remain close and intimate, holding tightly to the fellowship with Christ. Let me leave one last thought with you, and I, I will have my seat. I'll, I'll finish this another time. Look at John chapter 15, verse 4 through 5. I have to read it quick. John chapter 15, verse 2. This is a sermon all by itself. Jesus is talking in this text. You never know. He's talking. He's the head of the church. And if the head talks, you ought to what? Listen. Remain in me as I also remain where? In you. Y'all see the connection. No branch can bear fruit by itself. You can take your gift and run with it all you want to, but you cannot thrive all by yourself. Jesus says it must do what? Remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain where? In me. Watch five. Jesus says, I am the what? And you are the what? You remain in me and I in you. You will bear much what? But in order for you to bear much fruit, you have to get in line soda to soda with me. Walk, come find you and grab your hand so that you and I can be hand in hand as we walk. And as a church body, we need, we must step together, step by step. We don't need everybody uh, doing the long range of kind of stuff. We don't need that in the body. We need for us to work in unison and in harmony. he goes on to say, apart from me, you can't do nothing. Take this home this week. Three, three little things. Every member of South Lake needs to stay close to the vine. If you're on the vine and you're there, we shouldn't have a hard time, what, finding you. If you ain't on the vine, that means you ain't doing nothing. Find yourself so you are fruitless. The problem with the man in the parable was that not only was he unfaithful, he was faithless. Forget about unfaithfulness. He was worthless. Two, every member of South needs to faithfully use his or her gift. So don't just use it. You got to use it. You got to. It's no way around it. The builder has designed it this way. Whatever you do for the Lord, it needs to be done in close contact with every member of Southlake. He is, uh, he or she touches. Sometimes your ministry uh, to God doesn't involve all of us. Sometimes it's just two of y'all involved. Ministry to be just you as some other member of the Lord's church that you touch. Ain't that right, Edna? I got to talk about Edna. Some things Edna does in ministry does not involve me directly, but she's effective in it. Doing things I didn't even know that I'm just, I'm just, just wonderful, but that's her ministry. But it's touching somebody here. Three, last one. Through this kind of commitment, and it's going to require commitment, but not just commitment, it requires consistency. Not just commitment and consistency, it really requires conviction. Through this kind of commitment, 
and ministry, the Lord's power will flow for the building up of the saints at South Point. There is no limit. There is no stopping it. If God is for you, who can be against you? So what that suggests is there is no rhyme or reason why we're not, we're not blowing up like you've never seen before. I wonder if there's a, lig a ligament somewhere that has been severed. I wonder if we're limping on one side or the other. I wonder if we're malnourished somewhere along the way. I wonder if we're giving our all in all to the one who's the head of the church. I wonder. So end of the year assessment kind of stuff. I like the parable Kitchen's doing because there's an assessment involved uh, in, that, in that parable. Uh, we we got to be better at assessing. Where are we? Scheme of things. As God uh, would have it. Now, uh, I know sometime by December or January, we will have to do an assessment on our mission 100 because it's one thing to have a goal. That's another thing to not meet the goal. But it's a third thing if no nobody talk about how we miss the goal. Is that all right? Let's pray. God in heaven, thank you so much for being our head. Thank you so much for being the vine. Thank you for allowing us to be branches. Thank you for reminding us that we can do nothing without you, our head. That all things flow through you and it flows back to us because our willingness, our attitude to walk shoulder to, sh uh, shoulder, to shoulder. Help us to grab a hand in ministry like so that your work will be completed and done purposefully. Help us with our next step. We do realize that you won't give us the next step until we finish the step we're on. God, help guide us as a church. As beautiful as South Lake is, as wonderfully made as she is, as much as you've started this work, and I know you're going to finish it, we ask for a blessing. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Somebody who needs to come to Christ this morning. Uh, you come to Christ by hearing the gospel, believing, repenting, confessing, go down into the watery grave of baptism, come up a new creature, a new child of God that the Holy Spirit will gift you with abilities and skills. And you may even come into the church with those. He will accentuate those things so that you can be in line, shoulder to shoulder, hand in hand, step by step with all the rest of us to reach the goal that God has for us as a church. Then those of us who are members of the church, you have to make a, a, a real life decision today, not tomorrow, not yesterday, but today to determine where am I? Whose shoulder am I touching? Whose hand am I grabbing? Who am I walking with step by step? If you don't see anyone or know anyone, then you may be off doing your own thing your own way. But I got a secret for you that, that was, was revealed today. You cannot, you will not be fruitful without the rest of us. You will not, you will not, you will not. Now, somebody said, well, I got all this stuff. Don't be, don't be, don't be delusional. Uh, Satan can give you a whole lot of stuff. Y'all don't remember him, what he offered Jesus uh, while Jesus was fasting for the day? He had the nerve to offer him. And sometimes you get baboozled by what, what Satan offers you, thinking it's from the Lord, and it's not. As together we stand and sing. Why don't you come? Why don't you come? All my, my trials, all my all. My cares, you know that I can tell them to my Lord and heal my burdens bear, singing through the pain, through the pain. 
strength. You know that only Jesus, he brings me. 